Lord is in this holy temple. May all of God's people remain silent as we prepare for worship. We'll now be led in a song of praise by our worship team, followed by prayer by our associate pastor, Reverend Yvette Henderson, and our song of worship shall come forth from our male chorus, followed by our scripture by Reverend Carter, our evangelism chairperson, and the offering, our introduction of speaker, as we proceed from there. And a song of preparation by our voices of Israel. And then we will hear the word of God from our evangelist for the evening, Reverend David Bryan, pastor of Allen Metropolitan CME Church. Chicago, Illinois. Amen. Our song of praise this evening is praise him, praise him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. It's always good to give God praise. Amen. How many of you have come to praise the Lord this evening? Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen.
lift your voices and say, Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise the Lord. Let us bow for prayer. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Oh Lord God, we come before you today giving your name the glory and the praise. For you alone, Lord, you alone, Lord, are worthy of praise. So Lord, we invite your presence to come into this house of worship tonight, oh God. May your spirit fall fresh on us. Give to each of us, oh Lord, what we stand in need of today. Oh Lord God, we need a word from you today to help us to go on running this Christian race. So we ask, oh Lord, that your anointing would fall fresh on us that it would fall fresh on your preacher today, O oh Lord, that you would give to him, O oh Lord, all that he needs to encourage us, O oh Lord, to build us up where we are weak, O oh God, but to enrich our very lives, O oh Lord. We just ask, O oh Lord, that your spirit would just reign in this sanctuary today, O oh Lord, that you would have your way through your instrument, our revivalist, and that you, oh God, you, oh God, your spirit of love would just show up today so that we, Lord, would know your very presence of love, your very presence that keeps us in your will, oh Lord. We bind all things not of you today, oh God. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we just ask, oh Lord, that your spirit would reign all over this place, oh God. We thank you in advance, Lord, for what you will do on tonight's revival today. We just thank you in advance saying glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This song of worship declares that you thought I was worth saving. Amen. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. For all of us who are here and know our Savior Jesus Christ, this is a song of salvation and a song of redemption. How many of you are glad to be saved by the blood, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Amen. Bless us. Saving, 
So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was worth dying for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free and I can be whole and I can tell.
Our scripture for this evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, 17th chapter, verses 1 through 9 and 14 through 21. And the Red Pew Bible is found on page 798. Matthew 17, 1 through 9, 14 through 21. And the word of God reads, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead beginning with verse 14. When they came to the crowd, a man came to him, knelt before him and said, Lord, have mercy upon my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The word of God for the people of God. May we be blessed. The church say amen. 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 We thank God tonight for all of you who brave all of the D.C. traffic and parking to be here this evening to welcome our guest, which we will say something about momentarily after we lift up our offering. We also like to uh, give a shout out to all of those who are watching us as we're streaming this service live. Um, from Allen Metropolitan in Chicago. We wanted to wave at you because uh, we gave the, uh, the link for you to uh, watch us tonight and to watch your pastor. So they are streaming live from Chicago uh, to watch their pastor preach tonight. So we want to say uh, welcome all of our friends in Chicago who are watching us uh, tonight. We are up to our offering tonight. And we're just going to do one offering, and we ask that um, we would give liberally. You know, revivals are great, but, you know, you have to uh, finance them as well. <laughs> so we would ask everyone to pray about what it is God would have you to give tonight and ask that you would give liberally. We ask if there are any uh, stewards tonight. Uh, the baskets are here behind my podium podium on my left 
and if our ushers would come and assist us uh, with the people, we can do this very quickly. Amen. Pray about what it is you're going to give. You're making your checks out, make them out to Israel Metropolitan CME Church. Amen. And uh, praise God as the choir gives us some giving music. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Phillips Metropolitan CME Church in Hartford, Connecticut. If he would come up and pray over our offering. He's going to be the speaker tomorrow for the Veterans Day. Amen. He's going to be the speaker tomorrow at Veterans Day at Russell Temple tomorrow afternoon. Amen. So he thought it not robbery to come with us tonight. My good friend, Reverend Paul Everett. If you would pray over the offering for us tonight, Reverend Everett. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are grateful tonight for these gifts that 
we have given back to you. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this night, and we bless you, we worship you, we magnify you, and we pray, God, that these gifts, Lord God, these offerings will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom building, and we give you praise and thanks. Let the people of God shout together, amen. amen. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Thank you for the offering. Thank you, Reverend Everett. Amen, amen. He and his wife formed the dynamic duo at Phillips Metropolitan. The husband and wife co-pastors of Phillips Metropolitan CME Church. Amen. He was with us only for a short time in Washington. We still love him. Amen. Pastor Phillips Metropolitan. Amen. It gives me a great deal of honor to stand before you tonight to welcome our guest preacher for the evening. Last night we had a chance to break some bread with all of the ministers here at the church, Reverend Henderson, amen, Reverend Kara Richardson, Reverend uh, Ayanna Carter, and uh, Reverend Michael Gray. Was anyone else here last night that I missed? Yeah. Reverend Dennis up there, yes. He's on the wall, and Reverend Davis, Dr. West, who else I forget who was here last night? Amen. Help me out now. That's why. I'm, amen. 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 So we thank God for all of you who were here last night, and we had a time, didn't we? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. If last night was any indication of, of tonight, we were just breaking some bread. Amen. Nothing formal. Amen. But he came and just shared with us one last evening. Amen. Um, Reverend uh, Brian is the son of Dolores and the late David Bryant Sr. Amen. He has one brother, Jerome, and two children, David a graduate of Lane College in Jackson, Tennessee, and a daughter, Anika, also a graduate of um, Lane College. Amen, he's a product of Gary, Indiana. Amen, and um, he um, has traveled quite a, quite a bit and he's pastored quite a few churches. Amen. Let me just rattle off a few. He's pastor at Island Chapel, CME Church in Gary, Indiana. He was a presiding elder in the 3rd Episcopal District. Amen. Um, and uh, pastor of the Jameson Temple CME Church, the Walls Memorial CME Church, and currently is the pastor of the Allen Metropolitan CME Church there in the great windy city, amen, of Chicago, Illinois. He received his undergraduate degree from, well, he went to Prayer View, and I think he finished, um, finished up at Prayer View. He's also studied at Indiana University Northwest, and then he went to Garrett, Evangelical Theological Seminary in Evanston, Illinois, where he finished a Master of Divinity degree there in 1987. And just about five years ago, he went back and completed his doctoral studies, amen, at Union Theological Seminary, where he received his Doctor of uh, Ministry degree from there. He has... Um, been quite involved in ministry and uh, One Church, One School, Freedom School Academy, and Fatherhood Mentoring Program, and Computer Literacy Partnerships, and so on and so forth. He has been quite a bit and was voted one of the Outstanding Young Men of America and the Outstanding Alumni Award from uh, Prayer Review, and may, amen, and just a lot of other awards. But the one thing about 
Reverend Bryant that I really like. He is very sincere. And the reason that I asked him to come, because we serve on a few, served on a few national boards together. And so many times we would be, we would meet up um, in Memphis, Tennessee. Recently I was with him in Orlando, Florida for a meeting. And we've just talked and talked. So we've been knowing each other down through the years. I referred members to his church when he was in Kansas City um, and Kansas. And uh, we've just been around, hanging around each other for a while. He is quite the evangelist as a pastor. Amen. He's had, since the time he's been to his church, had over 300 people to join. Amen. Every week, they go into the worst projects in the city of Chicago. And he has organized his church. They have prayer teams. They have evangelistic teams. And they go out every week. So he just doesn't um, sit and do nothing. He is he's quite busy, quite busy. They have a prayer ministry unlike anything that I've ever seen. You'll hear about that more in detail tomorrow if you come for the workshop. He has his entire church organized um, around prayer. And that's why we wanted to have him here because he prays. He's like a Daniel. I asked him, what did he do today? I, I left him alone at the hotel. And when I picked him up, I said, I'll see you at 6 o'clock today. So I picked him up at 6 today. Uh, and so I said, what'd you do today? He said, I uh, went out of my room to get some ice. He said, Pastor, I stayed in the room praying all day. That's just who he is. Very disciplined. Very disciplined. He prays, and I'm not exaggerating, one to three hours every day. He's, one, he's the most disciplined prayer person I know. And it reflects in the life of his congregation. Um, he's cued me in on some of their prayer calls. They get together every morning around 4.45, 5 o'clock every morning. And he has different people praying for uh, the church throughout the day. There's a person fasting for the church every day. Um, we'll hear all about that tomorrow and see how he has it organized. But we're here to have him to preach tonight. Tomorrow, I do invite everyone to come and hear in detail, hear in detail something I've rarely heard about in any church, let alone a CME church, but in any church in any denomination. I've rarely heard some person with this much discipline in a church that organized around uh, just the love of God. Amen. Just a little tidbit he said to me a few months ago. He said, Ricky said, we're praying for that God would bless us with a van because they need to go out. And he said, they got to praying for it. He said, all of a sudden, somebody just called the church and said, hey, you all need a van. We're trying to get rid of a van. That's the kind of things that you hear in the life of the ministry there at Allen Metropolitan CME Church. Um, he is a lighthouse for the entire denomination, a lighthouse for the country. His mentor and the guiding person uh, he wants to pattern his ministry after is, I think it's Young E. Cho. Anybody have heard of Cho in Korea? He has the largest church in the world. Amen. He has over 200,000 members. And uh, we got a CD last night from him that changed Reverend Bryant's life. And I gave it to all the ministers last night. And mostly everybody said they've already listened to it. It's a very, very inspirational message. And so we want to hear Reverend Bryant tonight. And after we spent some time in the Atlanta airport, I think earlier this May, we were together. And so we were at the airport, and, and I said, I really need to get him here. So that let the congregation hear what good things God is doing in his life and in the church's life. 
because we want, we want our church to be a church that's centered around prayer. So all we're doing this year is geared around prayer so that some of the things that we see God doing in other ministries, God can begin to do here. So after the song of preparation from the voices of Israel, the next voice you will hear will be that of our guest preacher for today, the Reverend Dr. David Bryant, the pastor of Allen Metropolitan CME Church in Chicago, Illinois. Again, we like to say hello to those persons watching us live stream from Allen Metropolitan CME Church. And we pray that you would pray with your pastor as he comes forth as we pray with him too. The voices. This song of preparation is a prayer that says, be blessed my brother, be blessed my sister, be blessed wherever this life leads you. Let me encourage you let me speak life to you. And then it says you might be crying, you might be worried, you might be frustrated too. But again, let me encourage you. And it goes on to say that I'll pray for you, you pray for me, and watch God change things. Amen. And this prayer revival tonight, we've come to be refreshed and refilled and renewed. And how many of you want to see God change some things? Amen. So that we can be more like him. Come on and bless us.
you pray for me? And watch God change things. What a joy it is to be here this blessed evening in the fall revival of the Israel Metropolitan Christian Methodist Episcopal Church with my friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Ricky. Helton and his lovely wife, sister Loretta, and the awesome people of God located at the Israel Church in the nation's capital. So it is a joy, a privilege, an honor to, to be here this evening to share with you on this fall revival. What a blessing it is. Let me bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost. I bring you greetings also from the Bishop Sylvester Williams, who is shared with this afternoon and you want me to make sure I give you and Sister Loretta greetings from him and First Lady Carmen and from the Allen Metropolitan Church family uh, to all of the officers and the awesome ministerial staff that I had a uh, opportunity just to spend a few hours with on yesterday and each of them have blessed me and blessed my life just to share together in ministry and to this uh, awesome choir I heard you all at Bishop Hoyt's home going set, so I knew what I was in for amen and I thank God for blessing us tonight and these awesome musicians and for the people of God that have come on a Friday night I said on a Friday evening thought it not a robbery to come out to the house of the Lord to share in revival and ministry together and fellowship. So I am thankful for your presence. Thank you for pressing your way uh, tonight after uh, a long week. You could have chose to go home and stay at the house, but you pressed your way and came to the house of the Lord uh, to share uh, on your fall revival. Uh, to Pastor Everett, my brother I just met and heard about him, but had the privilege to be in his presence and thanking God for him and for his uh, lovely wife and their ministry uh, in Hartford. Uh, and to, um, to all of you, my father's children, I greet you in the magnificent and marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. I I'm thankful Sister Cynthia is here. I pastored her family. Uh, privileged to serve in Kansas City, Missouri at the Jameson Temple Church for 14 years and one of the tremendous families there was her family served in the ministry and helping uplift me. And when she moved to, to Washington, D.C., then I heard that there's a church there called Israel Metropolitan. You might want to go by there. And, and so that was been years and years ago and I see she's here and I just thank God for her. Also, Ayana um, I passed her up to family in Allen Metropolitan in Chicago, and she um, relocated to work in her, her doctoral work and ministry work, and I refer her to Israel. <laughs> and then she texts me and says, I'll be there tonight, and so I'm looking for her to come. And then one of my spiritual sons, who I had the privilege of being in ministry with and coming up under me, uh, Douglas, and Doug, not here yet, but he's on his, yeah, he's on his way, yeah. He just don't know, yeah. He come up under me, so I referred him to Israel Church, because we come out of Israel Church, and I said, there's a church in D.C. You might want to, so he texts me, he's going to come tomorrow, and when he come, I'm hoping he's going to lie down. 
I say that he maketh them to lie down in green pastures. Amen. So we just thank God for the privilege of sharing ministry, and we are co-laborers together in Christ. And so when our people, God, travel across the connection of relocate and move, we refer them to places that we know have pastors that will care and love them and care for them and are serious about ministry. And my friend, uh, Reverend Helton, Reverend Dr. Ricky Helton, is that kind of pastor. Uh, you, he referred, uh, they moved to, you were in Louisiana, and they moved to Kansas City, and you told them about my, Talking about pastor. And they joined and became my treasure of my. I said he became my treasure and his wife became my auditor, auditor, all, all that, that because the relationship that we had and the friendship and they came and found it to be true and they lied down. And the Lord blessed them and I thank God for his friendship. We just have that kind of friendship and I appreciate his love for God. He loves the Lord. And I appreciate his love for God's people. And so whenever we have the time to share together at our connectional meetings and uh, we have a few moments to have lunch or have dinner or even meet it in the airport, I always appreciate being in the presence of Reverend uh, Ricky Helton, your pastor. Amen. So we thank God for his pastoral heart. Give God some praise for him. Amen. And then he had the nerve, he had the nerve to invite me to come and share at his church with his church family in Washington, D.C. And so I felt shall ever be blessed and be thankful and honored in the opportunity to come and share in ministry here and uh, be a part of this uh, ministry and to share some things that God has been doing in my life and ministry with the people of God and uh, here in D.C. Amen. So let's give God some praise for that. Now, let's, 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 let's share. Can you praise for a minute? Lord, we thank you. Father, I give you praise and glory. I give you honor. I, I thank you for this opportunity, God. This is your church. It is your people. And you have sent me here to uh, share some things that you have taught me and things I have learned along the way and what you dropped in my heart and spirit. And I sought your uh, guidance and what you would have me to share tonight and I just thank you for the privilege to be here and ask your blessing God that you will bless us tonight you will pour out your spirit upon your son your servant Lord and you will minister to to me you've been ministering to me already you will continue to minister to me and through me in such a way that uh, you might be glorified you get all the glory all the glory all of the glory go to you. You know, I, you know I'm going to thank you. I'm going to give you all the glory and praise. And Lord, I just pray that you will bless the house, bless this house, bless the preachers and ministers, the pastors, all that have come. Bless us, the officers, the leaders, God. That, let no one come here that come tonight that will leave like they came. Uh, then pray, pray for an increase of your word within their lives and the life of the church and, and that ministry will flourish. And they will move to a higher level in you, God. And, we, and that we'll be careful. We'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll magnify you, lift you up because you know you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. And I thank you. And I ask it all in the matchless and the marvelous name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. Reverend Helton gave me a gift. I use, I'm using it too. Amen. Somebody give you something to use it. Be thankful. Amen. Gave me a gift. And I thank God for it too. And I needed it too. And I, I'm using it tonight. I want you to know. I'm using it tonight, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank God. And, and I want to share. Now, now. Pastor Helton um, invited me to, to come, uh, and the Lord summoned me to go uh, and be with him and his church and minister, particularly, he was very clear, uh, in the area of prayer. And the pastor informed me, he said, we are moving and shifting to prayer, and we are whole, he blessed me, because he said, the whole year, we're going to be out the business of praying. That blessed me. I went back and told my people, I said, the pastor talking about the whole year, 
number of prayer. You know, we with that. We with prayer. So I said, he talking about the whole year. So I started looking at how different ways that we can continue to tweak and to tone and to strengthen our ministry in the area of prayer. So I'm thankful for the privilege to come here and share this evening in the area of prayer. And after consorting with God and with the Holy Spirit, I've been led tonight to preach, uh, teach, and preach uh, this evening uh, on the uh, Matthews, the 17th chapter. I want to use Matthew, the 17th chapter, the verses that were read earlier by Reverend Carter. I want to reuse that, and I want to minister tonight on the subject. This is the subject of uh, the power of God's presence, praise, and prayer. The power of God's presence, praise, and prayer. You got it? Tonight we're going to deal with the power of God's presence, being in God's presence, the power of, of giving God praise, and the power of prayer in our lives, in the life of the church. <laughs> now, now, um, and I want to read Matthew, the 17th chapter, and use that as a springboard for us tonight. Matthew 17, uh, verses 1 through 9, then I'm going to... To, to, to fast forward to verses 14 to 21. I really want 21. And, and we're going to use that to really set the parameters of our ministry and what we'll be sharing. And I just want to show that we are sharing together. I, I don't know everything about prayer. Uh, prayer is a continuation of learning every day. Every day. It's a, it's a, every day is a, it's a struggle on prayer. Yeah. I say every day is a fight to pray. So, so are we learning, all of us are learning and growing in the areas of prayer, but prayer is so vital in our lives, in the life of our church, in the life of our communities, it's so important. And, and, and the main thing that the enemy does not want you to get a hold to, catch this now, the enemy does not want you to get a hold to the power of prayer. I said it. And I'm not going to take it back. The enemy does not want you to really get a hold to understanding the power of prayer in your life. And what prayer would do for you and for your family, do for your, your church and do for your community. The enemy don't want you to get that. When you get a hold to that, things will change. Some stuff will happen in your life you never even dreamed of because you were in prayer. So tonight what I want to share just for a few moments, I want to really help us to understand and look at it based upon the scripture or what the Lord has to say about his presence, about praise, and about prayer. I want to read Matthew 17, 1. Use that as a springboard for us to come home on. After six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John, his brother. And he bringeth them into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let me make here three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, 
be not afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man except Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And when he would come to the multitude, when it came down, they came down from the mountain. Now get this now, they came down from the mountain. And when they way down from the mountain, they came to the multitude, and there came to him a certain man. He was kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and so vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire and oftentimes into the water. And I brought him to that, listen, I brought him to your church, I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. It was a spiritual matter. He rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. And then came the disciples to Jesus apart. And they said to him, Master, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto the mountain, remove and the mountain shall go yonder place and it shall be removed. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. However, however now, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and... <laughs> now I want to share uh, with you on the subject, the power of God's presence. Praise and prayer. Because I'm convinced, church, based on the scripture and on my personal experiences, I'm convinced that uh, victory comes as a, in our lives and in the life of our church and in our community. Uh, victory comes as a result of our ability to stay in the presence of God. Victory comes as a result of our ability to praise God no matter what the situation may look like. Continue to lift God in praise. Victory comes. Victory comes not only uh, uh, in our ability to stay in the presence of God and in our ability to praise God, but victory comes when we are in communication through prayer with God. Victory comes every time. Every time we get to victory, not one time have I ever lost the battle that I was in prayer with God. Not one time have I ever lost the battle that God did not show up and show out when I stayed in the presence of God. Not one time. Not one time when I gave God praise, when I didn't see it, I just stopped praising him anyhow and kept on praising him. Something happened. Every time. I'm convinced, no matter what the situation may be. And so just for a few moments, if you let me indulge me just for a few minutes, I want to share some things that really help us based upon the scripture where we see God at work within the, the life of the church and the people of God as a result of their ability to stay in his presence. Hallelujah. There's joy. And power in the presence of God. In your ability, in your life, in your life, if you can somehow press your way, you did it tonight. Press your way. Somehow you can press your way and stay in the presence of God. Victory will come in your life. Now, now, in Exodus, I'm going to use for a, a backdrop. Exodus. The 17th chapter, you read it later. The 17th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse, the 8th through the 16th verse, is a story of the church uh, in the wilderness. And Moses, the pastor of the church, is pastoring the church. And the church is, come, uh, is being under attack by the enemies of the people of God. The people of God are under attack. I said the enemies of God are about the business of trying to wipe them out. And the Bible informs us that Amalek, which is the enemies of God, came against to fought against the people of God. Y'all do know that's what happened in your life. I 
I said, I said, if you, if you spiritual and you, as soon as you make your way and declare God as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the enemies will rise up. And the higher up you go, the more enemies will come. And when you become the pastor of the church, because when you're the pastor of the church, then all of the souls up under you, and the enemy know if he can get to the head, the body will fall. So you must understand spiritual warfare. Now all people engage in spiritual warfare, but the pastor, he's surely, he's surely engaged in spiritual warfare, not just for the people, but also for the community in which God has placed them there. He's in the business of beating down the enemy. And he got to have victory because victory is continued on not just him, but also on the church. Not just him, but also on the community that the church sits in. Victory. And his life and his ability to stay before God are central and key. Case in point, Moses. You read it when you get home. Moses, the children of Amalek, fought with Israel in Rehadim. And Moses said it to Joshua. Joshua was his assistant. You Bible students know that Joshua later would, would raise, uh, God would elevate him after Moses off the scene. But at this point now, this evening, Joshua is the assistant to Moses. And the Bible informs that Moses said unto Joshua, Joshua slew six men that would go out and fight against Amalek. In other words, get some spiritual people around you. Get some folk that you know really have a relationship with God, that know God. And walking upright in the Lord, power, get them around you. He said, Joshua, choose out um, the men and go out and fight with Amalek. He said, and tomorrow, tomorrow, what I'm going to do, Joshua, I'm going to go and I'm going to stand on the top of the hill uh, with the rod of God in my hand. This is what he tells Joshua. He said, Joshua, you're in the valley. You're going to be fighting in the valley with the spiritual folk. I'm going to go out on the hill. I'm going to stand on the top of the hill with the rod, you know, the same rod that I used that God I pointed at the Red Sea and parted the Red Sea. I'm going to put that rod up before God. And I'm going to stand there, Joshua, when you fight. Now, what is that talk? What is that saying? That's saying that the, the, the pastor, that spiritual warfare, the people are in the valley with you. When you leave out the church, uh, my, my professor, he preaching professor, Dr. Felton, he going on the glory. Now he would say this, he said, you leave the people on the mountain when you get through preaching. They'll find their way back to the valley. <laughs> he said, if you just leave them on the mountain, they'll find their way back to the... There's some stuff and issues that you'll be going through in their family, on the jobs, in the community, and they're going to find themselves in some difficult situations through the week, but leave them on the mountaintop. They'll find their way back. And that's what he told Joshua. He said, Joshua, go down there and fight. And now you fight, and I'm going to go stand on the top of the hill. Now you all know that the hill is always the high place. You all do know that. Don't you? The mountain is always the high place, and Jesus always went to the, and he took his disciples to the, because that was where the place is closest to God. And Moses said, I'm going to go and stand on the top of the hill. I'm going to take the rod of God and I'm going to point it up to heaven. And the Bible, you know that the rod was symbolic. The rod was a metaphor for the presence of God in his life. And so he would say, I'm going to take the rod up to heaven. And the Bible informs us in the 10th verse. 11th verse, it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Now that's deep. The, the war was not really dependent on them. The war, the, the war was dependent on Moses' ability to stay before God. Now that would miss, really mess you up. That, 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 that the, really the chief uh, turning point, the game changer, what they call the game changer was the pastor's ability to stay in the presence, the presence of God. And said that as long as his hand was up, Joshua had this victory. When his hand came down, the enemy had victory. So they figured out, they said, we got to keep the pastor's hand. You, 
you know, you know, Pastor, I had a, I had a, I told you uh, the people last night, the minister last, I had a paradigm shift. I have been in ministry for 20 some years. But the Lord told me, say, put your net on the right side. And I, I, in my early morning prayer, I said, Lord, what's the right side? I don't know. <laughs> oh, y'all know him. I said, Lord, what do you mean you told me to put my net on the right? What do you mean? Help me. And how many of y'all know if you ever ask God to help you, he help you? <laughs> Every time I ask him for something, he always. It wasn't long that the Lord helped me to understand to move. I had been ministering to people, but he said, I love, I love the people. People belong to me. I want you to minister to me. David, you minister to me, and I'm going to minister through you to the people. Don't worry about it. You just spend time with me, fellowship with me, get in your presence. Get in my presence and spend time with me and, and, and minister to me. I'm going to minister to you, and I'm going to bless your church. I'm going to bless your people. I'm going to bless through you. You're trying to pass the people. I'm going to pass the people. I'm the power. I'm going to pass the people through you. Ooh, that messed me up. 20 years, because I'm an A-type, meaning that I have a lot of energy, and I try to do get a lot of things done. And so I would get up early, go into the office, do hard, but then the Lord changed me, and changed me, and changed my paradigm, shifted my paradigm. Now they say, well, Reverend, Reverend's in prayer. Early in the morning, I don't go to the office, where my office, I change my office for nothing. So I change my office to my prep office. And I get up and go to my prep office, and, and tell him everything on my list, every situation, every Teresa, and they were interviewing her. I was listening years ago before she passed. They were interviewing her, and I was on the edge of my seat because I wanted to know what this woman of God, what was really made this woman of God who she was, and to really understand a person, you got to get behind us. It ain't that what you see out there. It's behind the scenes. Some stuff was happening. I was on the edge of my seat, and the commentator said, Mother Teresa, when you pray, what do you say? And she said, I don't say anything. I just go there and listen to God. <laughs> And the Lord speaks to me. And that was a paradigm shift. Because all my life I've been coming up, going in with a list. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Anybody in the house? Tell the truth and shame. I go in with my list. Put out my list. But the Lord said, now, put your list up and just come here and let me. And something happened. And so what they did, the church caught a hold to it. And Aaron and Herod, they were the assistants. Reverend, Reverend Carter, they were the assistants. Uh, Reverend Yvette, they were assistants. Uh, Reverend Richardson, they, they were the assistants. Uh, doc, 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 they were the assistants. Doc, they were his assistants. And what they did, they got around Moses. And they put a stone up under him and said, sit down, Moses. Because <laughs> you know the, the, the race is not given to the swim, but those that endure for the... <laughs> said, sit down, Moses, sit down. And Moses, don't worry about nothing. And then the air got on one side. Aaron got on the other side. You know, Aaron was the priest, the first priest. He got on the other side, and they held up Moses. <laughs> now, I asked the people yesterday, I said, was Moses right-handed or left-handed? <laughs> you know, all kind of stuff like that be going through my, my spiritual imagination. But uh, one thing that the Holy Ghost said, but we know that he, one weak arm was weaker than the so all of us have areas in our ministry where we're not as strong and God has put other people around you to help you to hold up your arms. Hold up your arms. Yeah. And they held up. You know the awesome thing. You know, I'm a morning person. Pastor Taylor said, you know, I get early and I love it. But about 9 o'clock, about 10 o'clock, I'm going to be shutting it down. 
<laughs> but, but I'm not tonight because I got some rest. <laughs> but usually, I'm a morning person. I know, I just, want, I just wanted to put that in there. That's a little one. So they can know, Pastor, no, I mean, you're not coming out of this right away. No, I'm not going to fall asleep on this one. No, I'm the Lord didn't prepare me. But I want to say with you, the awesome thing about it, what I learned, because I'm a morning person, but the Lord put another ministers around me that I night people. And at 9 o'clock at night, you will tell me, 9 o'clock at night, they're going to blow my phone up. Because they pray at 9 o'clock at night. And they call me Dr. Jamisa. She calls. She ain't going to call today because you know I'm free. Hallelujah. They call me at 9 o'clock and then give me the scripture that we were praying for. And then they start praying. And she prayed like a wild woman. <laughs> at 9 o'clock at night, I said, my God, this woman prayed. My God, where all this come from? My God, this woman prayed. My God, this woman prayed at 9 o'clock at night. And something happened in the inside of me. And something happened. I get some energy from somewhere. I don't know where it comes from. But I feel better. It's something about prayer. It's power in prayer. And I found out. And so she prayed at night. Then I got a noon person. Pray at noon. Every day. And then they can't. And then I, I tell them, I said, call a pastor. Because I wanted to be like Daniel. I studied the prophets. And Daniel prayed three times. I never could be that disciplined in my life. But I got a ministry. And I, then they got a ministry of noon prayer. And nine o'clock prayer and they call a pastor I'll be I'll call at, at 4 45 in the morning but they call at 12 o'clock and at nine o'clock at night and the victory when I found out that the victory the victory was not contingent on Joshua and the, the victory was contingent on Moses and Moses ability to stay in the presence of God I found that out that was a that was a I opened it for me I said, you know, this victory, this victory is about, about my relationship with God, my ability to stay before God. When I pray, things happen when I don't. I can tell just as good when I pray. My prayer life is strong. I can pray. I can tell just as good when I've been in the presence of God and when I haven't been in the presence of God and I've been trying to do it on my own. And when I've been in the presence of God, I don't have to do it God. And I can tell just as good when I've been in prayer. And you know, we, we just like in Chicago here, just like in Chicago. That the traffic is horrendous. And I can tell just good when I've been in prayer, I can get to the hospital. And as soon as I get there, somebody pull up. I don't be wary trying to do things on my own. The Lord said, I got that. <laughs> then I went there, and, and, and you know, I went there, and, and uh, they had called me late. I don't know what happened. But I got there, and, and I was running behind. And I got there, and she said, they backed the surgery up, brother. <laughs> I said, God got this. He said, I got this. Spend time. I said, God, I'm going to spend time with you. And you can take care of this. The church is yours anyway. You got it. I'm going to spend time with you. At the annual conference, I, I'm privileged to serve as the treasurer. And I was trying to get my reports and everything ready. But I knew we was going through a whole lot of things. I knew a lot of things was happening at the annual conference. And the pastors had said, pray for me. This one has to pray. And I was praying for them. I was praying for my bishop. I was praying that the Holy Ghost move and, and, and microwave and do divine orchestrate this thing and work this thing out. I was praying. And so I got, finished praying. And I didn't have but an hour or so to, to do all my reports and get ready and leave. And on my way home, pastor, I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to worry. On my way home, I had an accident. I was okay as long as traffic was moving. When traffic stopped, <laughs> it was over. Next thing I know, I had not at all. And then I hit, the next thing I know, I was on that Jeep. But thanks be to God, I wasn't hurt. She wasn't hurt. She said, I'm not going to worry about no suit. All I want to do is get my coffee. You don't have to worry about none of that. I called in, got my insurance, all that. Thing. And I said, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I was praying. And, and our body was tired. I fell asleep. But I'm not going to stop praying. Now, if you want me to keep praying, you're going to give me a driver. <laughs> That's what the Lord. Sunday morning, I get an invitation. Come down the aisle.
o'clock in the morning. I had to y'all got me on the on the early morning, the red eye, five o'clock in the morning, three thirty, he was there, three fifteen, he was all set. Fast I'm here. The Lord put you in my your life in my hand. You don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna take care of business. Stay in the presence of God. And everything you need, God will bless. And I'm moving now, but before I move, you read that passage. And you're going to read in the 14th chapter that the Lord told Moses, and Moses, make it a, a memorial and write it in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua for generation to generation that they all might know presence of God is power. The victory is really in your ability to stay in the presence of God. Secondly, and I'm moving swiftly, I'm moving to uh, this next thing related to praise. The power of praise in your life, in the life of a church. It was something when y'all start singing that, uh, that song. You know, you can feel when praise starts going up. There's something about it when you start praising God. You can feel it in the sanctuary and something will happen. It'll start turning on the inside of you and you start praising God. And the Lord told Joshua, this is Joshua now. He's been elevated. You know, he was assistant before. Now he's been elevated to the mantle has fallen upon him. And his ministry is to lead the people into the promised land. That they might worship God in freedom and truth. And Joshua is informed by, by God. The first hurdle that he has, the first spiritual warfare that he has to deal with, the first situation they have to deal with is the situation of Jericho. And Jericho has never been conquered by anybody. And anybody in their right mind wouldn't even mess with Jericho. And Jericho has a king that's a bad, bad, bad king. He's a bad man. And he has an army like no army before. And the city of Jericho is walled around it. All the way around. You can't get in it, and they can see you for miles and miles to come. Coming up to the city. It's an awesome thing. I was in Jerusalem, and I, and I was in the Holy Land, and they took us to the same site where uh, 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 Joshua fought the battle and where Jericho used to be. I said used to be, not there, but Lord wiped it out, and he took us to where it used to be in the ground around there. And it's just an awesome thing. He said, now look over here. You can see thousands and hundreds of miles from this site right here. I said, that's awesome. And the Lord had given it to uh, Joshua. But the way he gave it to him was so awesome. It's so premier in the life of the church. It's a metaphor to help us to understand the power of praise in the life of a church. He told Joshua, said, Joshua, I want you to get to musicians. I want you to get to directors. I want you to get to organ. I want you to get all of those, get them around you and get to priests, get to uh, the men of God that are priests before you. And I want them to do this, Joshua. I want them to walk around Jericho. I want them to be on single file. I don't want them to say nothing. Don't be. But what that's talking about, that means when you have a, your church is really moving and no murmuring. And no back, you know, you can't, you got to kill that. No backstabbing, no sharing. The, the, the folk are lining up in God. And they're lining up behind the man of God, the servant of God, the woman of God. They're lining up in their own one accord. And he said, I want y'all to walk around the city. And then go home. Joshua, go home, eat some rest. And then get up early in the morning and get. I want y'all to walk around again. He said, I want you to do this for seven times. And then look what he said. And it's uh, and, uh, seven priests shall bear the ark, seven trumpets, and a ram's horn. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. It's something about that number. That's a kingdom number. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. That's praise. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all of the people shall shout. Hallelujah! Shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down. Ooh. Praise! I dare you to praise God. You know why I get up in the morning and now I do. I put on a, a, my uh, my uh, turn to my uh, YouTube, and I hear uh, somebody like maybe Juanita Bynum, and she'll be let us sing early morning do it. 
and I just get that, and then I get some more praise and worship, and I get into get my mind ready to pray, and I be really. Then next thing I know, I'll be praising God and thanking God and glorifying God and magnifying God and telling God how much I love him. I tell him how awesome he is, how magnificent. I tell him about how he brought me and what he taught me along the way. I tell him about all oh, I thank you, how you delivered me. I thank you about how you saved me. I thank you about how you moved me. I thank you for the privilege of elevating me. I thank you for calling me. I thank you for anointing. I thank you for I just be thanking and praising him. You know, he entered into the courts. You come into the courts. He said, come into the courts. You leave Psalms 84. Come into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. That's how you get into the presence of God. You stop praising God and stop thanking God and stop praying. And after a while, you'll know you'll be right up in his face. Hallelujah. And you just praise God. They're going to say, what do I do when I get there? Don't you just thank him. What do I do when I get there? Just praise him. You can take about 15 minutes just to praise him. Thank you. Count your blessings one by one. All that he did. After a while, something's going to happen on the inside. It's like a wheel be turning around just. Something's going to happen. Your mind's going to get lighter. Something's going to happen. You're going to find yourself in the presence of God. You're going to start praising God and worshiping God and magnifying God. I don't spend no time. You know how you are. I spend less time talking about my knees. I, uh, I spend my time praising. I spend my time worshiping. I spend my time magnifying. That's it. Now, Lord, you know, there's a couple things on my mind I want to share with you. I know you know about them already, but I want to share them. There's some things I, that I need your help with doing that I can't do on my own. And I'm afraid to touch it because if I touch it, I'm going to mess it up. So I'm going to wait on it. I, Lord, I, I, there's some situations in the church that, 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 that really need your, your intervention. And this is your church, and this, these are your people. And I need you to help me with this situation. You know this situation. And I tell you just what this situation is. Call the names. And just say, now, I need you to help me. I can't do this on my own. If you don't do it, it won't happen. I'm not going to touch it because the last time I touched it, I messed it up. I'm not going to mess with it no more. I'm going to wait on you what you're going to do. When you're going to do it, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. And guess what happened? Sometime before I get off my knees good. And the wall came tumbling down. Hallelujah. And they walked over flat. They said that the archaeologists had studied, and they studied thousands of years. And what they do, they dig. They dig all around the site, and they can find a civilization based upon the stones of that civilization. And I, I got a deep appreciation for archaeologists. The archaeologists, but this was an awesome thing. They said the archaeologist who was our guide, he said we hadn't found nothing. They said, he said, is this, you think this is the right place that we've been digging? And, and for all indications, this is the only place that it could have been, but we ain't found nothing. We ain't found the wall. Of, and he said, but we finally came to understand that there's a God, and God said he destroyed it. He de <laughs> so we're not going to be able to find it. That's evidence that God wiped them out. He wiped them out clean. And the archaeologists can't even find nothing. Because when God take care of your enemy, he take care of your enemies. Y'all don't hear me say he'll come in one way and they'll flee seven ways. That's when God got that thing for you. And then he told us, and I go up and look over. And we looked over and said, that's an awesome thing. And it was an awesome thing you could see all across the plains of Jericho. You could see it from that site. They said, this is an awesome thing. So the Lord said, once you get Jericho, you're going to have the whole. The Lord said, once I, I deliver Jericho into your hands, you're going to have the whole region. Everybody that comes through going to have to come through to see Joshua. Everybody that comes through going to have to pass through Jericho. And you're going to be in. So when God is using you and God is at work in your life, he will allow things to happen that you know that God did it. You didn't do it. God would not deal with no small stuff. He deal with big stuff that you might give, air, give him the praise and the testimony that God brought you through. I dare you to praise him. Hallelujah. You know, we even shifted out to our church. We do spend more time in prayer. <laughs> so I said, we're going we're gonna to set the atmosphere. You let them, because there's something, something different, Reverend, you're trying to preach. And, and, and those, 
But when the atmosphere's set, Reverend, you can come and say hallelujah and then fall out. Because the atmosphere's set and the Lord can work on their hearts and minds and they're ready for the word. And all you got to do then is get up and preach the gospel, the good news. I'm a Dutch race and they'll fall on good ground. And that's what he gave us music for and praise for. And that's why they can praise to go. I'm not coming up behind that. Let the praise team get that thing ready. I'm not coming up. I'm going to let that praise team right? And work on them hearts and minds. And let the people start praising. Let the folk get up and start praising God. All the way in the back of church. Now I know it's ready now. It's ready for the word. They're ready for the word of God now. It has set the atmosphere. Right. Praise has set the atmosphere. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. And folks in a preach, Reverend, preach. Preach, Reverend, my heart. Preach. I'm ready now. Give me the word. Give me the word. <laughs> praise. Hallelujah. I found it out in my personal life. Praise. I found it out in the church. Praise. And there's power. Wonder working power in praise. And Jesus, I'm coming home now. Jesus took his disciples to the mountaintop. He took Peter, James, and John. He took them, the inner circle, what they call, took them to the mountaintop because the vision had to be clear with Peter, John, and James. If nobody else, I appreciate you. You called your minister together and get all the ministers together. I have prayed. I said, Lord, show me how, what steps, how to minister. And how, I've never been into a house to help the house to move to a prayer. Everybody don't call for <laughs> Everybody don't call for prayer. But this pastor didn't call for prayer. Now, show me how to, what is the steps that we should take that pour into the pastor, then pour into the minister, then pour into the leaders of the church. When you get that, the whole church... I appreciate that. He took Peter, John, and James to the high mountain. And then while he was on the mountain, he praying. And I did find out this, that he was on there all night. And that's an awesome thing. We started all night prayer. We're in our second month of all night. Now, that's radical. I know you know. Everybody not with that. But I started based on what the Lord told me. And based on this scripture, they said he came down the next day. <laughs> I've been reading a long time, but never understood. He came down the next. So, gee, if it was good for Jesus, it's all right with me. Yeah. I ain't worried about nobody else. Jesus was in prayer all night. Stayed on the mountaintop. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He stayed there, and something happened. While he was in prayer, the scripture reports that his face did shine like the sun. Hallelujah, his aura, there was an aura about him. I'm going to tell you, if you pray, there'll be an aura. If you stay in the presence of God and pray, there'll be an aura. <laughs> Is his face did shine like the sun. Now, you know that's pretty deep. You can't look at the sun straight, can you? If you try to look at the sun, it's so bright. So you know what the disciples were going through, they were looking. His face is shining like the sun. His raiment was white. White as snow. His raiment was whiter than bleach could write it. His all aura around him. You know, I was praying this morning. I said, God, forgive me all my sins. I said, wash me, God. Wash my sins away. I said, forgive me for every sin I ever committed in my life. Have mercy, God, fill me. Wash me from the inside out, Lord. Wash my mind. Give me have a mind of Christ, God. Wash my ears so I can hear what the Spirit said. I said, wash my tongue so I can speak the truth. Wash my feet so I can walk in paths of righteousness. Wash me, God, wash me. Please wash me, wash me. Wash me so I can hear what you hear. Now wash me, God, my heart can be pure and I can see you. Because said, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Wash my heart so I have a pure heart. I can see you and I can see you at work within the life of the church. Wash me, I can see what you see. I can hear what you... Wash me, wash me, wash my sins away. Wash me, wash me, wash me. Wash me till I'm... Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Wash me. Sanctify my mind. Don't let me think that evil stuff. Don't let me be selfish. Don't let me be mean. Don't let me be unkind. Wash me. Forgive me for my... Wash me. Wash my sins away. Wash me. Forgive me for the things I did. Now forgive me for the things I didn't do I should have done. 
Forgive me when I didn't speak and I should have spoke. Forgive me when I said something that was not. For, forgive me. Watch me so I can hear. Watch me so I can feel like you feel. Stay in the presence of God and get white. It was like white, whiteness all around me. It was like whiteness. And behold, in there is a white ass lightning. And there appeared to him, now this deep, there appeared to him talking to him. They appeared to him in the midst of prayer. The prophet, the, who was the, uh, the uh, arch prophet, if you want to call him, he was the prophet of all prophets, the prophet Elijah. He was talking with Elijah. You know, Jesus also made. He was talking to Elijah, and Elijah was there, and they took and they, they said, that looked like Moses. And Jesus was talking to Elijah and Moses. Hallelujah. In prayer. Because when you're in prayer, God will speak to you, and you'll have a prophetic life. When you're in prayer, you'll be able to fulfill the law of God in your life. And in the life that God has given you, you'll be, because Jesus is the fulfillment. Uh, they said to Jesus, they said, Jesus, we want to build three tabernacles. And, and the voice spoke from heaven, the cloud. And then the cloud was the Holy Ghost. And the heart of the Holy Ghost, the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. When you get in prayer and you stay in the presence of God, you'll hear stuff you can't hear in the Natural realm. You get in the presence of God, you'll see some things you can't see in the natural realm. That the natural man can't see it. But the spiritual man that's in the presence of God, he can. You'll hear some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then Jesus told him, said, Now don't tell nobody this, this vision that you have seen. Because he had told them in the in this chapter before, if you read it, he said, It'd be some of y'all here not going to tease the death. Until you see the Son of Man coming in his glory. He had just told them that didn't the three, they saw him coming in his coming in his glory. And Jesus was on the way back down. Hallelujah. He was coming down from the mountain. You know, this is what the pastor told us. And I told him yesterday, my professor told me, he said that when you are, when you go on Sunday morning, you ought to be coming down from the mountain. You ought not be going up to the mountain on Sunday morning. You ought to be coming down from. <clears throat> I said, what's that? In other words, soon as you, soon as you come down, when you get through preaching on Sunday, soon as you come down, soon as the benediction came, soon as you get through shaking hands, then go, go immediately in prayer. <laughs> and wait on God all week. Wait in the presence, trying to get the word, not just the a word, get the word. That's a rhema word. That's the word for right now situation. That's a word for a Pacific people at a Pacific time in their life. You want not just a word, you want the word. Stay there. Stay right there until you get it. And labor with God in the presence until you get it. And Jesus has been to the mountaintop and he got it. Moses and Elijah were talking to him. Hallelujah. And, you know, I lose my sanctified imagination. They were talking about said, Jesus. You know, we, we Moses, I'm not, I, I, I gave him the Ten Commandments. But, Jesus, you are the commandments. <laughs> you the fulfillment of all of the commandments, Jesus. I gave him the Ten Commandments, but you the real law. You're going to put the law not in no tablets, Jesus. You're going you gonna to put the law in their heart. They were ministering to Jesus. <laughs> and then uh, prophet, and then Elijah, I use my spiritual imagination. And then uh, Elijah said, Jesus, I, I was prophesying. I, I'm the chief prophet, prophet, prophetic word that was given to them, but you are the fulfillment of all of the prophecies. All of the prophecies are wrapped up and tied up in you, Jesus. You are. They were ministering to Jesus. Jesus had called them. They were talking about what was getting ready to happen. And Jesus said, yeah. And Jesus, not only that, Jesus, but now, Jesus, you're going to go to the cross and you're going to be the lamb. You're going to be just like John cried out. You know, John cried out when he first saw you. He said, behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the you're going to be the, you're the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the whole world. Go on, Jesus. Go on to the cross. Jesus came down from the mountaintop. Oh.
long shall I suffer you? You know, that's really something, you know, when you, you, you hope and pray when you are way past it, you hope and pray that your church had the same spirit you have. You hope and pray that, that they're going to carry out the same things that you believe and trust God. But Jesus said, bring him to me. And then Jesus, it was a spiritual situation. Read the Bible. He rebuked the devil. It was a spiritual situation. It wasn't no natural thing. It was in the spiritual realm. And Jesus dealt with it in the spirit. And he rebuilt it and put him in submission. And the boy said, healing came. That very hour, the boy got healed. That very hour, the boy got healed. And Jesus was sharing later that afternoon. And the disciples called him to the side. And I love, I love, I love, I love Jesus. They called Jesus privately. And they said, Jesus, why couldn't we, why couldn't we heal him? Why couldn't we cure him? And this is an awesome thing. I asked the Lord, and, 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 and I said, Lord, I said to the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, why did you get so upset with them? You wasn't there. I said, Lord, why would you get so upset? You wasn't, you wasn't, they was there. You was gone. You wasn't there. Why did you get so upset with them? I, I, I was trying to understand what, how could that be that the Lord was so set with them and he wasn't there. And the Lord ministers back to me. And this is what he said and reminded me. You remember when, when Lazarus got sick? He got sick unto death. He wasn't there, but they sent for Jesus. <laughs> he said, they could at least send for me. <laughs> if you send for Jesus, everything going to be all right. Even if you get there and he died, he said, all right. Get up, rise, rise again. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, that's awesome. He said, all they had to do was call for me. Yeah. Say, somebody go get Jesus. <laughs> go take word to Jesus. That the man. Secondly, secondly, the Lord said, now, this is the second thing. Now, this really blew my mind. Saying, um, all they had to do, Jesus wasn't there. But all they had to do was say, Jesus is on his way. <laughs> just stay right here don't send the boy they sent the boy home said don't go home just stay right here Jesus is going to come back and when he come back he got power when he come back he got healing power and you got to come back in the, in, the, in, the, in the hem of his garment you can be made whole when Jesus get back they didn't even tell the boy to wait they sent the boy I said Lord I'm and so every situation, and then finally, the Lord saying, all they had to do was start praying. They all had to start praising God and say, Jesus, you know, we can't heal him, but we know a man. <laughs> he gives sight to the blind. We know a man who walked on the sea, of, the sea of Galilee. We know a man who opened blind eyes. We know a man. They didn't do nothing that they sent to man. It's an awesome thing when folk come to your church and go back home the same way they came. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just be some power. And then they asked Jesus this. They asked Jesus this. They said, Lord, I love, I love the disciples because they were straight up. I love them because they, they, they didn't cut the corner. They were straight up. They said, Lord, why couldn't we cure him? And they was open to hear what the Lord had to say. You know, you got to do things you have to do in life. I find out you got to ask the right questions. Some folk don't even know right the question to ask. <laughs> I thank God you got to ask the right question. Then you got to be open, buckle your seatbelt, and be ready to hear what thus said the Lord. <laughs> and then when the Lord speak to you, you got to move. Hallelujah. So the disciples said, Jesus, why couldn't we heal him? And Jesus said this. He said, because of your unbelief. Now, awesome thing. In the presence of God, when you're in the presence of God, your faith will get I said, when you spend time in prayer with God, you'll get our faith coming by hearing and hearing coming by the word of God. When you're in the presence of God and you stand, you know, he builds up your, you get faith come from, and you're in the presence of God, you get so strong, you'll believe whatever God said, he can do it. I believe it, he can do it. He can do it. He said it, I believe it. But you've been in prayer. You've been in communion with God. He said it. He's able. I know he can give it. I'm standing on his word. I'm not going to back up off that. I... And guess what happened? Faith. Faith. He said all things are possible with faith. Oh, ye of little faith. 
Hallelujah. Then the second thing he said, he said that, that uh, these things only come through prayer and fasting. Something's not going to happen in your life. If you don't, and now this is an awesome thing. I said this, and I want to say this, and this, I found out this too. God does not do anything on earth without the involvement of humankind. I said, God will not do anything in life. You say, uh, you know, in Chicago, it's a whole lot of struggle. They got television shows and everything now, like radio station, trying to say, what is going on in Chicago? Why all, well, and then, then one uh, person was on, and they said, why God let all this happen? <laughs> he blamed God for it. But God, God gave dominion to him. He said, I got the earth, and I got the heaven, and you got the, whatever you loosen I loosen it. Whatever you bind, I bind it. And God does not do anything. He involves the humankind. He involves us, those believers of us. He said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal, 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 heal. Heal the land. He's a healer. He'll heal the body and the soul. God is about the business of healing. And in the kingdom of God, healing went forth. Everywhere that Jesus went, somebody got healed. Everywhere. His ministry was a ministry of healing and deliverance. A ministry of casting out devils and demons. A ministry of walking in victory and power. Everywhere that he went, hallelujah, the devils were trembling. Yeah, angels fall prostrate. He was Jesus, the son of God. And he said, I give unto you the same power that you can tread on scorpions and serpents. He give us the same power and authority. And it comes through the power of prayer. Yeah. Now it's powerful. He said, one could put a thousand to flight. Two could put ten thousand. One could put a thousand, but me and you get to get ten thousand demons. We run up out of here. Ten thousand demons have to leave because the power of prayer. In the life of a believer that's sincere and will walk in the God's holy way and believe it, God will. God will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Yeah. Come on, musicians. Come on. Yeah. Prayer. The power of prayer. The power of the presence of God. The power of praise. And the power of prayer. In the life of the church, come on. Come on, whatever musicians. Hallelujah. Some of you here today. Some of you in the house today. But your prayer life is not what it once was. You're not experiencing the intimacy, the joy from being in the presence of God. Early in the morning or late at night or at the noon hour, whatever your time is, you're not doing that. The devil has got you uh, away. And busyness and things and responsibilities of life have pressed on your heart and soul. And you're not going to your prayer closet no more. You're not going to your garden. You're not going to that place where the power is. That's where your power really is. Power for not only you, but power for your own. Power for your family. Power in your community. Yeah, and if you would just, you would just rekindle your relationship. If you would just renew your commitment to fellowshipping with him. If you would renew your commitment to get in his presence. And then I love this. I love this. Uh, uh, Lightfoot, he said this. Years ago in the revival, I never forgot it. And the preacher said, uh, another priest arose. And he, he didn't know how to pray. And, and, and the wise, wise man told him, say, don't worry about that. Just go to the place. And stay there and get in the presence of God. And the power of God will fall if your heart is sincere. Go there and wait on him. Jesus said, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall ride and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on him. Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. Wait. You know, I went to the Holy Land, Pastor. And we were in the place. And we were in the hotel. And I didn't want to leave Jerusalem. And that night we went up there. And it was awesome. The, the priest came down and said, now, nah, all the rooms are filled down here. But there's another room up in the upper room. And something happened. And we went up there. And my colleagues were with me. They said, you lead the prayer. Hallelujah. And I, wait. I said, Lord, we all the way over here. And I don't want to go back like I came I didn't come over here for no fun. I came over here on pilgrimage with you. And I want you to do something that you did for them. You know, we waited, waited, waited. You got to wait on God. Wherever your Jerusalem is, wherever your closet is, I, I, I trust you have a place. I'm thinking about my place right now. I go there, I'm going to go there in the morning. I'm going to go there and wait on you. He be there waiting on me when I get there. Yeah, and if you will pray to God, God in fellowship with God, and commune with God, you know, and you know that's why God made us. He made us for fellowship. <laughs> he made us to spend time, somebody with the same spirit, to spend time with him and to, to be in communion with him and fellowship with him. And then he said, I'm going to build my church. Yeah. Yeah. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And I'm going to give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you lose, I'm going to loose it in heaven. And whatever you bind, I'm going to bind it in heaven. Yeah, that's Jesus. That's the word of God, I believe it. Yeah, there's power, power in prayer. Somebody here today, and you've been reminded by the Holy Ghost that you got to Go back to your first love. You got to go back to that place where you first met the Lord. You know when you first got saved. <laughs> you couldn't, there wasn't enough days, hours in the day to spend with God when you first got saved. And you know, I, tell, I told God the other day, I said, God, I love you. But not only do I love you, I'm in love with you. That's the difference, you do know that. <laughs> I love you, but... Not only do I love you, but I, I'm in love with you. Yeah. I like to spend time with you. I like to be in your presence. I like to hear from you. I like you to talk and I just listen. I like to talk to you. Yeah. Somebody here knows what the preacher talking about. Somebody here has been there and you want to get back there. Yeah. And somebody here will help hold a pastor arms up. Yeah, I told my preacher, all the preachers around me, I said, I need a praying preacher. <laughs> I don't care what you do, I need you to help hold this ministry up. And you help hold it up through prayer. prayer. I can't do it by myself, but I need you to pray. I don't I never met no minister don't pray. I need you to spend time with God and wait on God. I, and when you wait on God, God going to bless your ministry and God going to bless the ministry of our church. I need you. To really lay out before God. How much time do you spend with God? And you know what the Lord had me do. We have a new members class. I wasn't teaching it. I, but I found out another pastor whose church was growing. He was teaching it. And they brought it back to me. They said in his new member class, he teach you how to pray. I had been pastor, but I had not been teaching people how to. And the disciples said, Teach us how to, like John taught his disciples, teach us how to, John taught them how to pray. Jesus, you teach us how to pray. And your disciples have to learn how to pray. That's power in prayer when the whole church prays. Yeah, if you're here today and you're really, you're really ready. You're ready to go to the next level of your life and in your ministry. You're here today and you're ready to get before God. And to wait on God, you know it's so easy to get away. And you know the devil never tell you that, uh, don't pray. He never tell you that. He just tell you to pray tomorrow. <laughs> if you tell him, if you tell him that you know he's the devil, but he don't say that. He say, don't pray. You don't have to pray right now. 
Yeah! But if you press your way every day and pray, pray about your family, pray about your children. I told them in Chicago, they were talking about they took prayer out to school. I said, I'm not worried about that. I'm looking for the person who took prayer out to home. I'm not worried about nobody taking prayer out of school. Uh, we, you ought to pray before you leave home. Pray with your son. Pray with your daughter. Come on, let's pray together, Kobe. Come on, let's pray together. Shanika, come on, let's pray. Bow your head. Yeah, prayer. That's power in prayer. And the prayers of the righteous avail as much. Somebody here today. Hallelujah. You ready to go to the next level? You ready to seek God early in the morning, late at night? You ready? You repent that you have not put him first. Seek ye first. You know when I get up in the morning, I don't cut no TV on. All that bad news, I said, no, no, I can't handle that first thing in the morning. The first thing in the morning, I go in prayer. And it's a difference. Hey, my uncle called me. He was so weary. I said, cut that news off. <laughs> I said, don't, I told him, don't let him watch the news early in the morning. That he can't handle that. He's not that strong. He can't handle that negativity. He can't handle that. He get all frustrated. Then he want to call me and cut that TV off. Yeah, put on some praise music. <laughs> yeah, I dare you, I dare you. I dare you to get in the presence of God and put on like the early morning do. Put it on. Yeah, something about it. Hallelujah. If it's all right, Pastor, can we, if those who want, I mean, to be renewed, those who want that intimacy, joy, that hunger, you have to hunger. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll be going through the day and I, I tell the Lord, I say, I can't wait till the morning, Lord. <laughs> I can't wait. I say, Lord, wake me up early. I'm tired, but I want you to wake me up early so I can spend some time. And guess what? The Lord wake me up. And I said, Lord, it's 12 o'clock now. <laughs> I thought he was wake me up by 2 o'clock. And the Lord would tell me, come on right now. Come on, let's spend some time together. Yeah, it's power in it. Power in prayer. Power in praise. Power in his presence. Yeah, I dare you. I dare you. Put God first. Seek him early while he may be found. Yeah, wait on him. The altar is open now. It's open to come and kneel. Come on and kneel at the altar. Come on and renew your relationship. Come on and renew your intimacy. Renew your joy. Renew your praise. Renew your prayer life. Come on, come on and get in the presence of God. In his presence is power. In his presence is peace. In his presence is joy. In his presence. Get in the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah, he'll bless your ministry. He'll bless your church. He'll bless your family. He'll bless your community. He'll bless you. If you get in his presence, the presence of the Lord. Yeah, Jesus is the high priest. And all you got to do is get in his presence. Yeah, it's like oil that ran down Aaron's head upon his beard, even down to the skirts of his garment. Jesus is the high priest. And that's why the woman, the woman who had an issue of blood for 12, 12 long years, she pressed away. And she just touched the hem of his garment. She got in the presence of God. And something happened. The issue was, she was healed. Won't you get in his presence today? Won't you get in the presence of God? Won't you renew your commitment to fellowship with him every day? Every day is new mercies. Every day. Yes, yeah, more power for you. There's no weapon formed against you shall prosper if you stay in the presence of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Won't you come and won't you come and recommit your life? Recommit your prayer life. 
recommit to him and won't you set a designated time you're going to rise up and you're going to seek his face he said if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves humble yourself turn from your wicked ways trying to do things on your own why don't you turn it over to God why don't you trust God yes hallelujah Lord hallelujah Lord we before you tonight we before you oh we're sorry God we're sorry for not spending time with you we're sorry for not seeking you early in the morning waiting on you late at night we're sorry for trying to handle things ourselves we're sorry forgive us forgive us forgive us forgive us forgive us Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us and wash us. Renew us. Yes. Yes, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Oh, hallelujah. Won't you come? Won't you get in the presence of God? Won't you give your life? Won't you make a commitment to trust him? And Daniel did it three times a day. Oh, and his life was blessed. Yeah, Paul and Silas prayed at midnight and the chains were fell off. Yeah. The church prayed unceasing for Peter and the angel of the Lord came and loosed him. Took the shackles off. Yeah. And he told him, say, now get up, Peter. Put your sandals on. Guard yourself. And, and he began to walk. And the first ward opened up. And the second ward opened up. And the third ward opened up. He was on another level. But the people of God were praying. That's power in prayer. Abraham prayed. Yeah. He prayed. He said, Lord, would you wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah if it be 50 righteous? And the Lord said, no, no, Abraham, for you, I won't wipe them out. He said, Lord, 40 righteous would you wipe them out and the Lord said no no not for you for you Abraham the righteous the righteous the prayer of a righteous man availeth much yeah he said Lord would you wipe them out for 30 if it be 30 righteous now and the Lord said no no Abraham for you Abraham not you my friend Abraham a friend of God, yeah. He got down to 10. And he said, Abraham, Abraham, what? And Abraham said, What well, Lord is would you do it for 10? <laughs> yeah. He said, Abraham for you. <laughs> yeah. For Abraham, a righteous man. Prayer. That's what prayer would do. Yeah. And they couldn't find 10 righteous. Reverend, Reverend, they couldn't find 10 righteous. But the Lord delivered, delivered his nephew Lot. Delivered his family. That's what God would do for you. If you spend time in prayer, your family. Oh God, if you would just pray. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless this church. Bless this church, Lord. Bless these people, your people, God, as they seek you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm so grateful for the things that you have done. your word. 
Give God another round of praise tonight. Amen. Pastor was preaching to me tonight as I was preaching Sunday. I told the congregation I was preaching to myself. Because it's so easy to get busy and you forget about your personal devotion. how very important it is, how vitally important it is to have some meditation life. And that's what Pastor Bryant reminded us. All of us should have some personal, private, devotional time with God. So that's what I want everyone to leave here with tonight. After we met last night here at the church with the ministers, I got up early this morning, around 3 o'clock, and went into my private place and communed with God. We want to start doing that as a congregation, but it must first start with you as an individual. So I challenge all of you to find your private place and have some devotional time with God. Amen. Amen. Now we can ready to go. We want everyone to know that we're having a workshop in the morning. Amen. We want to start at nine. We will have a breakfast for everybody. It's a continental breakfast, but it will be breakfast nonetheless. So you come here. We're going to have it ready for you. If you want to come before nine, it's going to be here. We'll probably start shortly after nine, but we'll have breakfast. We're going to have lunch too. But we're going to end at 12. Pastor has to catch a plane. So we're going to be on time tomorrow. We're going to end at 12. You can have breakfast. We're having some food brought in and some food that we're going to have here. So we want everyone to come. So bring your Bible and some notepads. And we're going to hear in particular some things about how prayer can work. 
Amen. We thank Pastor Brian today for what he has brought before us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Amen. Now we have an evangelism chairperson. That's Reverend Carter. We're going to ask her to come up and give us some remarks, and we're going to go home right after that. Amen. Amen. This is our Board of Evangelism Chairperson, Reverend Ayanna Carter. Thank you, Pastor. Dr. Bryant, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you for last night. I thank you for showing us the way. I thank you for listening to God and doing what he told you to do. I thank you that you and your church have been praying for us. Because then we can go out and we can pray. Reverend Henderson talked last night about how she had started getting up early in the morning. Pastor talked about how he got up early in the morning this morning. It's been a long time since I got up early in the morning to pray, but I got up this morning and spent about an hour with the Lord. Because he talks to you when you spend time with him. This is not a revival that lasts one night. This is a revival that changes your life. So I invite you to life changing. Because when you pray in the morning, you pray all day. When you praise in the morning, you praise all day. Come out tomorrow. Invite someone to come out tomorrow. Before we talked about it with Just Be Israel, we need to share already. You pray for me. I'll pray for you. We'll pray for a pastor and keep his arms lifted high. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight because it was ordained for you to be here tonight. And give God all the glory all the way home. And whatever time you were planning to get up tomorrow morning, come up just a little hour, one hour earlier, and pray our way into tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Carter. One thing I want everyone to pray about, pray for our renovation program and plans, that God will bless, that we'll put our elevator in and redo downstairs, because the church needs it. The church needs it, but it's not gonna happen without prayer. So I want everybody, everybody, I want you to show me tonight a show of hands. How many are going to pray for our renovation program? Let me see it. All right, now, keep your hands up. You promise God you're going to do that? All right, you can put your hand back down. I'm all right now because I know you said not before me but to God that you're going to pray that God would bless our renovation program. Amen. Let's get ready to go home. Let's have the doxology. We'll hear from Reverend Brian again in the morning. Amen. Let's have a doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings.
Pastor Brian wants to share something. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. If I must share. Ayana, is, are you here? Would you stand, please? Ayana is her mother and family is a member of Allen Metropolitan Church. I want her to stand because she was in a serious auto accident. She was hit from behind and tremendous hospitalization, hospitalization. And her family called me from here, and I called Pastor Helton. And he came to the hospital, and that's the young lady right there that you went to the hospital to see. And uh, your prayer warrior. I just had, I hadn't, I came in late, I hadn't saw, but I thank God that we've been praying for healing for you. We continue to pray that God will heal you, heal your body. And we thank God, thank you for coming out. And this is, we thank God for you, Pastor. I called him, and I don't care what his schedule was. He got over there, and she was way out somewhere. I don't know where she was. Rest in Virginia. And she, he went over there and found her, and then sent some members, too. So thank you, thank your church. Thank you. I couldn't go, but he went and prayed, and we thank God. I, I must say that to you, Israel. Thank you so much for your ministry. And Pastor, I pray to the Lord, what should I give you? I want to give you something. And I brought this back from the Holy Land, from Jerusalem. It's anointing oil. And I want to give this to you because our good and pleasant is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the beard that ran down Aaron's beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. This anointing oil and will run down from you all the way down on your ministers and your people. God will bless your ministry. Amen. I brought this back. Amen. Stand up again, Ayana in the back. I went over to pray for her. Was it rest in Virginia? Yeah, it's in rest in Virginia. Pastor called me from Chicago. They were getting ready to cut. I know she don't want me to say this. But they were getting ready to, they were getting ready to amputate. And I said, don't let them do it. We're going to pray. I said, get her some other advice. Hallelujah. She's standing right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> They're going to amputate both of her feet. <laughs> they were going to amputate her feet because of the accident. And I said, don't let them do it. Seek some other advice, baby. We prayed right there. Reverend Carter went over there, and we prayed. Amen. She's standing in the back right Amen. now. God bless. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for you for being here today. We're going to pray for you after we dismiss and want you to come down so we can even have a more prayer for you. Amen. Thank God for you. God is good. They were getting ready to amputate Hallelujah. Thank you. the next day. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is still in the healing business. Hallelujah. Praise God. My mother said to pray. She worked for the CIA travels all over the world for the CIA. Amen. But Jesus came and saw to her needs. God bless. Amen. Reverend Carol Richardson, I want you to come up and give the benediction. We haven't heard from you tonight. Come up and offer for us a prayer of benediction. The benediction is the most powerful prayer in the service. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Most gracious, everlasting Father, we just thank you for the word that has been spoken to us and over us this evening. 
we just ask that, Father, as we depart this place, that you will dispatch your angels round about us so that we will be safely guarded from here to our individual destinations. We just thank you for the word, dear Father. We just thank you for the word. And as we go, that we will allow our hearts to be transformed, that we will allow our hearts to be renewed, dear Father, and that we will spend a life of prayer and praise to you because we know that there is power, wonder-working power in prayer. We just thank you, dear Father. We just praise you, dear Father. And it was we go, may we go with the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts. These and all other blessings we ask in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. At the church, say amen. You are dismissed. Come back in the morning. We have breakfast and lunch for you. And you will hear more about the power of prayer. Amen. Good night and God bless.